Every day, hundreds and thousands of people are victimized of a puppy scam. These victims are often scammed out of their money and in most cases out of a dog. See these puppy scammers? They like to target people that are vulnerable, undereducated, or maybe they just saw a picture of a dog online and they're already emotionally invested into it. And this has become very evident during the COVID-19 lockdown and especially around the Christmas season when families are looking to bring a puppy into their home. If you're watching this video, you're probably watching it because you're looking to get a puppy somewhere down the road or you're currently in the process of getting a dog but you're unsure if you're dealing with a legitimate person or a scammer. But don't worry because I got your back and I'm going to share some tips with you on how to identify uh, if you're dealing with a scammer or not. But make sure you stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to share with you guys five tips on how to find a good breeder. Now before we get started, it's really important to note that there's two different forms of a puppy scam. There's a monetary scam and then there's the misrepresentation scam. So for example, it may indicate that you're getting a purebred French Bulldog, but in fact, it's probably mixed with another breed. So that brings me to my first point on how to avoid a puppy scam. Do your research. Educate yourself before you buy a French Bulldog. This is going to be the best thing that you're going to be able to do for yourself before you end up getting in contact with a seller. Learn as much as you can about the dog. Educate yourself on the characteristics, um, you know, the structure of the dog, you know, with the color, the health concerns, the price, um, breeders. If you do find a picture of a French Bulldog that you are interested in, save it to your computer, go to Google, and do a reverse search on it. That right there is gonna save you a ton of time. It's gonna save you a headache because you're gonna be able to tell whether that dog is being listed on another form or a website, if the seller is the same, if it's being listed in the same city, or if it's already been used um, by another person. And see, these puppy scammers are very used to going onto these forms and other breeders' website, saving their uh, pictures, and then using them as their own. Now, before contacting any seller, it's really important to know that these puppy scammers do live in Facebook groups and on websites like Craigslist or Kijiji if you live in Canada or Puppy Finder or something along those lines. Um, these guys are really good at what they do and they will give you a sob story along the lines of you know that they have these cute puppies and you know they're very friendly but unfortunately they can't keep it where they're living um, sometimes you'll often see things like a two for one deal or a 50 percent off uh, deal on a puppy if the price is too good to be true um, it most likely is it's probably not legitimate you're probably dealing with a scammer so uh, that's something just to be very mindful of um, when you are getting in contact uh, with these uh, sellers. If you do get in contact with them, you will uh, quickly learn that their grammar is very poor and they don't speak very good English. Now, that doesn't mean that all sellers that you know don't have good English, um, you know, is a scammer. That's not true, but um, it's just. A lot of these people are very they're from overseas and you know they'll avoid having any kind of uh, communication over the phone or FaceTime everything's gonna be either done through a text or on an app like whatsapp or um, through email so you'll, you're never gonna have any kind of like um, visual interaction with the person if you do ask them to send or show you the pictures or video of the dog that they do have for sale, um, they'll they'll do anything in their power to avoid it. And if you start asking them a lot of questions, then they'll kind of just like be very quick and they'll they'll just cut off cut you off because they don't want to be answering too many questions. So that's going to be a good indicator to you if you're going to be dealing with if you are dealing with uh, a puppy scammer. Now, if you are going to be dealing with someone that is local and you have an opportunity to go meet them, and this is where the misrepresentation part of the scamming comes into play. Um, for anyone that is going to be meeting up with a seller, do not go alone, especially for the ladies. Um, grab one of your friends, grab your brother, grab your dad, someone that's just very large and intimidating 
take them with you. Um, you don't want to be going to anybody's house um, alone. If the seller is telling you that he wants to meet um, at a park or a parking lot in public because, you know, they don't want you to know where they live. Most likely you're dealing with a scammer. It might not be monetary, but you might end up getting a dog that is um, being misrepresented for what it actually is. Or, you know, if you end up getting a sick dog, you're gonna have no way of tracking down that person um, to follow up with them to get any kind of information or whatever. You're not gonna have any kind of support from that person. So if you do end up getting a meeting with them, um, try to go to their home, see if you can see the dogs um, at their home, um, but do not meet with them in a public place like a park or a parking lot or in a back alley or I don't know, wherever. And make sure you take someone, you know, big and built and, you know, tough. Yeah. All right, we are at the point where these vultures are gonna try to get some money out of you, but we are not gonna let that happen to you because you are smart, you are educated, you've done your research, you've come to this channel and you've watched this video, you've liked it, you've commented. I can't go on any longer, but we are not gonna let that happen to you. So what's gonna happen next is these guys are gonna try to get some money out of you and they're gonna try to get you to pay up front. Um, they're gonna make some kind of promise to you that they could get these dogs to you out the next day. And it's not gonna happen until you make payment. Now, these guys are not gonna have any interest in you. They're gonna ask little to nothing about you. And they have no interest about where their fairy tale dog is gonna go. So if you are at this stage, and you have included in that you're dealing with a scammer, please do me a favor, cut off ties, don't send them money or gift cards or anything because you are not gonna get a dog. Um, you're just gonna get scammed. So please do me a favor, um, just go the other way because you're dealing with a scammer. So I'm not gonna leave you guys hanging. I did promise you guys that I'm gonna give you guys five tips on how to find a good breeder. So. I am going to get into that right now. All right, tip number one is to do your research. Do your research on the kennel, the breeder. Um, check to see if they have a website. Do they have a business page? Do they have any reviews? Um, the reviews is going to be really good because you'll be able to see not how many people they've sold to but what their experiences was like and then you'll also be able to connect with those people if those reviews are on their facebook page you could get in contact with them you know see what their uh their experience was like uh pre-purchase and post-purchase what kind of support did they have see if you could actually get in touch with some of their older clients to see if there was any um you know problems you know at one two or three years old um of the puppy's life um so do your research as much as you can um ask questions um don't be afraid to ask too many questions uh you know this is a big responsibility and it's a big investment so you want to make sure that you're dealing with someone who's uh, legitimate and you know that has their heart in it Tip number two is speak to the seller or the breeder on the phone. If they are not local to you, get them on a, you know, on a FaceTime, uh, speak to them, see if you could uh, see the puppy, um, if it's available. Um, if the parents are not on site, ask them why. Um, I know there's a lot of information out there with people saying, oh, check to see if the parents are on site. This is great, but it's not always available because a lot of breeders, um, some of them do co-own. So they might not have, um, you know, the, the male or the female on site with the puppies, um, especially if they're older. Usually the puppy or that the, the female will go back to its family by, you know, six weeks once the, um, once the puppies are able to, you know, feed themselves. Um, so, if they're not available um, right there and then, um, 
don't be alarmed. Just see if the breeder will communicate that to you. And in some cases, when you do go see the uh, the litter, they might be able to organize having the, you know the the parents there, or at least get some pictures. Get some pictures. Do that reverse search on the pictures. Uh, I cannot stress that in, enough because there's so much information you can get from that. If you don't know how to do a reverse search, um, YouTube is amazing because I'm here and you're here. So it's really quick. You just type in how to do a reverse search. Um, so use your Googles. Um, it's good. Check it out. So there's a lot of information you could get from that, but uh, definitely speak to the, um, and I don't know why, what's with my hands? Why am I doing this? Speak, I'm gonna just, Put them right behind me <laughs> um, speak to the breeder and the seller and uh, get them on a facetime if they're not local and so if you have landed on their facebook page and you see that they've been active for a while they have some reviews check to see when that last review was check to see the people's names of that review and try connecting with them ask them questions ask them what their experience was like before they bought their dog with that breeder or seller or whatever however you want to phrase it just get as much information from them of what their experience was like with that uh, seller ask them what it was like after they took their dog home was it healthy did they have any issues if they did was the breeder available uh, you definitely don't want to be buying a dog from someone um, who's not going to be available to you um, after the sale um, if you know if you have to ask the breeder for a reference um, don't be don't be scared to do that it's totally normal if they are hesitant to give you any kind of references because they've been doing it for so many years then you know what just go the other way because if they've been doing it for so many years they should have no problem giving you a few references um, just to give you peace of mind and ask as many questions as you need to to make you feel comfortable about making this purchase um, just ask as much as you want um, you know if they get annoyed they whatever they get annoyed maybe the past client might might the maybe the past client might get annoyed but just ask as many questions from the breeder that you need to, to make you feel uh, comfortable. Okay, if you have found a legitimate breeder and you're on their website, you're gonna go to their contact page and you are gonna see that they're gonna have a sales process outline. And that could be, you know, fill out a form, you get a questionnaire, a phone interview, whatever it may be. Whatever that breeder has outlined, it's gonna be on their website, part of their sales process, so there's no surprises. Um, any legitimate breeder is gonna have a process because what's important to them is that these dogs go to good homes, to good families, where they're gonna be able to live a good life and they're gonna be loved. Um, to any legitimate breeder that loves these dogs, the importance of a dog is up here and the money is like, it's down. It's like below my feet. Like that's the difference. So if you have found someone that is um, really trying to get to know you and making sure that you're ready and you know that you've done your research, then you've probably found a good breeder. Um, get to know them, let them get to know you and build a relationship with them because this is a big commitment for you and for them and for the dog. Like, so um, that's my advice for you guys today. If you guys liked it, give me a thumbs up, drop me a comment down below and let's try to put a stop to these um, scammers by educating other people. So if you are in a Facebook group, Let's help each other out collaboratively and share this video within your groups so we can help other people be more educated and be more aware of what's actually going on and how these scammers operate. Um, guys, that's it for today. Thank you so much. Um, I know it's been a while since I posted, but it's been a crazy month. Summer is here and I've been like you. I've been cooped up inside for like months and I need to get some vitamin D. Is it vitamin C? Vitamin. I need to get some sun. 
and Philly needs to go for a walk. He's passed out, but look, okay. Come here, Philly, let's show you off. Oh, come on, buddy. Oh. Oh. There he is. He's sleeping as, as always. I think he's ready for his, for his walk. All right, see you guys.